G'day everyone, this is a crown moulding that I made for a cedar bookcase and for me this is the most enjoyable part of woodwork. Today I'm going to show you how to use hollows and rounds to form mouldings. Now the basis of that is joining two profiles together, one formed by a hollow and one formed by a round, and you must get them parallel and they must join together perfectly to form a certain shape. So you can see in this crown moulding, um, we've got a cove here that was formed by a three quarter inch round, and then we've got this more complex shape, what they call an OG, where you've got a round into a hollow. Now, the basis of the moulding is to join those two perfectly together so that it forms a continuous curve. The other simple moulding I want to show you, which is uh, very useful and good to learn on, is a series of beads using a quarter inch hollow plane to form these little beads. And you've got to make sure you get them parallel and we'll show you how to do that. First we're going to look at some core tools for making mouldings. Uh, the first thing you'll use is a pair of snipe bills, so right hand, left hand. And some improvements we've made to snipe bill planes is we've boxed the sole in brass because it does wear, if you've ever seen any old wooden ones, they, they do wear quite badly on the sole. The other thing uh, we've done is uh, we've used this brass abutment to make it easy to remove the uh, wedge, take the blade out, sharpen it, and also makes it easier for setting up. The sizes that I like to teach people are the smaller sizes, like this is a quarter inch hollow and a half inch round. So you buy them in pairs, a quarter inch pair and a half inch pair is a really good starting point. If you want to get into bigger mouldings then a three quarter inch pair is quite nice. And when we talk about the size, this is a half inch round, that means the body is half inch wide and it is a half inch radius on a 60 degree segment. Uh, we also use very dense Australian hardwoods which makes the planes have a reasonable amount of heft for a small plane but very very hard wearing on the sole so that you'll get a lifetime of use out of these tools. If you need more specific details about the size of these planes and specifications, you can go to the description just below the video and it will link you to uh, our website or the Lee Nielsen website if you're a USA customer. Like all good um, teachers, I'm going to show you the theory using a diagram. So you can see, if you follow my pencil, that's what that's the round going into the hollow, what they call as an OG shape. Now, I like to do this shape first, so form a bead using snipe bills. Now, that's the top of your piece of timber there, right? And we're gonna form this shape, but at the bottom of that profile, it's a sort of a slightly rounded curve left by the snipe bill. Now, when you set up to do this profile here, for them to come together perfectly, you have to have the centre line of the round um, the correct distance from here. So you, the temptation is to measure from there and put the centre line here, but you've got to pick that point there and measure from there to the centre line. In this, for us today, we're going to be using a half inch round so this distance here from that point to the centre line of the profile will be exactly one quarter of an inch. Like most things in woodwork, you need to be able to hold your workpiece nicely. So this beautifully made bench, it's nice and flat and I have a very uh, good tail bias. Very delicate, I can hold that and I don't get any movement while I'm planing. Um, with the smaller uh, hollows and rounds, they're only designed to make smaller type mouldings. This is a typical mouldings that you might make. This could be a frame to go around a, 
uh, or it could be a picture frame or some detail to go around a panel door, for instance. Um, in essence, you don't want to go take your timber pieces too small, otherwise you'll have to support them whilst you're doing your moulding. This is quite a um, strong piece of wood, it's about 12 mil by 30. That'll man be no problem to hold in the tail vise and create our moulding. Um, there's two ways of doing this. Um, one, I'm going to do the moulding on a flat piece and the other way is I'm all going to form my 15 degree bevel and do the moulding straight away. With this one, after I've created the moulding, I then have to cut those 15 degree angles on the piece of wood to, to actually create, create this scenario. Um, I'll leave it up to you which way you would like to do it, but I'm just showing you two um, quite simple options. And sometimes one or the other may work better for the size of the moulding you're doing. Um, with beading, quite often it's in the middle of a larger piece of wood, so that's why we're showing it on this piece here. Um, very important that your surface preparation and your getting your wood ready for your moulding is good so that everything's straight and square. Um, so I'm, I've got a little divot here, so I'm just going to plane that out to make sure we're working on a nice flat surface. So this angle was 15 degrees. And the other thing to consider is um, matching your timber. Mouldings are about the mouldings, they're not about the timber. I definitely wouldn't use highly figured timber to make mouldings. It makes it difficult to make for a start, but it's all about the lines and shadows that are cast on the moulding which give your furniture that that look that you're that you're after so first of all we'll do one on a flat uh, piece of, flat straight piece of wood if you do do it this way and you've got that angle um, getting that plane straight can be a bit tricky so this tilting plate in conjunction with the front vise works quite nicely to hold the piece of wood Okay, we're going to get down to the nuts and bolts of this. Um, so I'm going to use the flat piece of wood to start with uh, and I'm going to run my quarter inch hollow plane. So to do that I set the two cutters at the width of the plane body and I'm making this moulding so I want the cutter to be about 3mm from the edge so I'll move that up. and run my cutting gauge line. Put a nice deep cut in there. While I'm at it, I'm going to do this other 15 degree piece of wood. Now this is where it's a bit trickier with your cutting gauge because you haven't got that flat surface to run on. You gotta make sure your cutter's cutting into the wood nicely. So if you do use this method, you need to make sure your cutting gauge is not wandering off. Uh, another consideration when you're making mouldings is the length of the piece of wood. If, you're, if you want to make a frame, then you make the moulding longer so you can cut it and mitre it out of one piece. If not, you have to do it in sections, but that makes it harder to match the moulding. Okay, first thing, I uh, get my snipe bill. Uh, a little bit of wax is also nice on the sole to help it run. The main thing here is that you don't run off, so put your sole in the line. Just take it steady. Make sure your body's lined up nicely so that it just runs down that line. Usually only need two or three passes. Okay, when you've done finish your right hand one, um, move across to the left hand line. Same again, put your sole in the cutting gauge line and work it. If the 
uh, sole feels like it's bogging down a bit, a little bit of wax on there. Make them look nice and even. Then take your plane, as I was saying before, make sure it's nicely laterally adjusted so you can just see a nice black line as your profile. Now that will be enough to run that plane. Now, if there's a lot of material to take off in bigger mouldings, for instance, you'll go set your blade a little bit deeper. So you just keep planing till you start to get a full width shaving. Your first couple of passes will probably have a split shaving, and that one there's a nice full width shaving. What you can see here now is we've formed our profile, which is this piece around here. Now. I've, what I've got to do now is find this spot here and do my measurement for the next um, plane, which is my half inch uh, round plane. So I pick the center line, this is a half inch round. So I want, I'm going to measure exactly one quarter of an inch from there to the center line and then draw another cutting gauge line down through here. You can probably just see it there, I'm going to put my quarter inch mark just inside that sharp edge which is the bottom of the profile we, I showed you on the piece of paper and then put a nice clear mark at the quarter of an inch. I've done my line with the cutting gauge, now what we've got to do here is convert that line into an open V so that the round plane will run in that wide V. So the way to do that is first of all take your snipe bill you can, it can be either your left or your right, and do a vertical cut. As you do your second cut, just lean the plane over slightly so that you're opening out the V. Take your other plane, do a vertical cut. and lean it over make sure the V looks nice and even the next thing you do is take your moulding plane bring the blade up and you need to set this reasonably deep you're going to put the corner of the, the blade in the moulding. So lean it over like that and you'll feel it sit in the moulding, in the, sorry, in the V. Take a few passes and gradually stand it up. All right, and then do the same on the other side so that you're making your V nice and even. Probably another pass on that side. Now I think that V is shallow enough so that I can sit the plane in there. I'm going to reverse this so you can see it better. So sit your plane in there and you'll feel whether it's going to hold its position. Sight down the side of the plane and it should be right in that position that you mark from. If it's not, you can correct the moulding at this stage by you know, creeping it one way or another. But if you've done your marking out correctly, as you're playing you should see a nice uh, curve starting to form. And make sure as you run your plane down, it's nice and parallel with the other other profile. If it's not, you, once again, you can correct at this stage, but um, you don't have much uh, scope there. That plane's nice and comfortable to push in this wood, so that never force a plane, make sure it's sharp, and set to the 
a deck that is um, comfortable to push. Down this end we're nearly there so we'll just concentrate on this end. And you're just wanting to eliminate that line. And that will mean your profiles have come together perfectly. And you've just got to be looking all the time. As you get closer, you can back that blade off just slightly for a finer finish. Particularly if you've got any awkward grain, that's not a bad idea. And you just got to make a judgment of when you're there. If necessary, you can come back and just take a little cut with that plane if, if you think it's necessary. And try to finish with one complete pass. Now, essentially that profile is done, but what I'm going to show you now with my right hand snipe bill, this, this point in here is what they call the quirk. If you make that slightly deeper, it shows, uh, throws a better shadow and makes the moulding stand out more. And that's pretty much done. That's done on the flat piece of wood now. We'll have to go and saw that, that edge at 15 degrees and then cut the other side to make it into that profile. Now we're going to apply the moulding the same as before but to the 15 degree angle piece of wood just to show you the difference. The main difference is when you're using your planes you need to make sure that they're angled at 15 degrees or your plane is square to that surface. Um, but same applies, we just do a couple of passes with the right hand and then we just move in and do the exact same as what we did before. Okay, so this is my flat profile in my right hand and the angle profile which I just did in my left hand. To complete this one, I've marked out a 15 degree line there, so I'll cut that on the bandsaw and then cut a 90 degree line to that. And you'll see that they'll end up um, exactly the same profile. I've just achieved in a different way. My personal preference is to do it flat and then bandsaw it. Because we've got 15 degrees on this piece of wood, this tilting jaw is perfect for this job. But it's only going to work on shorter pieces, but this is perfect for this job. So if you had made a longer moulding and it had to be cut up to be mitered, then you would probably do that first. So you can hold it in this vise. And there's our complete moulding. If you now compare that to the other one we did, they're very, very similar. Probably get a better look with the sawn end. So you can see there's two very distinct ways of doing it. I actually like to do it on a, a square piece of wood and then cut the angles on it. Um, I just find it a bit easier to hold the planes vertical, but you should try both options and then you'll find out the best for you. Okay what we're going to show you now is another really simple profile but really uh, a good one to learn on. 
So using a quarter inch hollow, we're going to do a series of beads close together, which they call reading. Okay, to set up to do this quarter inch bead and then uh, multiples of, I set my two cutters, the width of the plane, which is one quarter of an inch. Then I decide where I'm going to put my uh, first bead. Quite often this can be in the centre of, of a, um, a drawer front or a, a post of a cabinet. So I'm just going to select that spot there, lock my gauge off and run some nice lines down there. I like a cutting gauge because it's less likely to run off when you're marking your profile out. So once again start with our uh, snipe bills. So I've got my right hand snipe bill, I'm just following the profile. Don't forget a little bit of wax if it feels like it's bogging down a, a little bit. Okay. With that depth of cut, about three passes and I've got enough depth to run my mold, uh, my ran, uh, hollow plane. I've got my marking out right because that hollow plane fits in there nicely. Notice you get two shavings and then when your profile is done you'll get that full width shaving like that time, that one there. That indicates to me that the profile is done. So it's a nice clean bead. So we'll then take our ruler and remembering we've got to measure from the bottom of that one and we'll put another line at a quarter of an inch. Now from here on in we only need uh, one gauge. The other way you can do it is to make sure your two knives are at quarter of an inch and you can just put the one knife in the right spot. Right, lock it up, but recheck your position. That looks right. Run my next line. Right, don't think you can speed it up by running a whole series of lines you'll probably end up in a bit of trouble there. So I only need my right hand snipe bill because the le left side of this bead will be the uh, other side of the first bead. All right, take my quarter inch hollow plane. Sometimes you just got to lean it over to get into the corners, but that's looking pretty damn good. One, one more pass. All right, so we've got our next one done. And then we just make sure you keep the cutters at the right distance, and all you got to do is move the head of your gauge. And we'll do a series of four beads together to form some reading. Hopefully that explains how to combine two curved profiles using hollows and rounds to form a more complex moulding. Uh, whether 
you're using quarter inch, half inch hollows and rounds, doesn't matter. The, the principle is the same when you get into your bigger mouldings. This crown moulding we made for the red cedar cap, uh, bookcase, um, there's a video, if you go to the comments below, you'll see a link to this video, and it shows the um, techniques you use to make big long mouldings. You've got to set your bench up a certain way, um, but it uses exactly the same principle to join these two uh, curves together. This one has a, uh, a rebate there into another cove. So if you want to get into the bigger stuff, have a look at that video. I think you'll find it very, very useful. Um, if you have any questions or comments, they can be left below in the comments section and we'll try to answer any questions you have. Uh, if you find our videos interesting, you can also um, subscribe to our channel and we'll be doing some regular videos each week to show the use of different planes.